day one. I booted back up again, today, in a city I'd never seen before. Alone. I left Black Desert City with... I can't remember their names anymore. I can't I remember their names. My two friends and I left Black Desert City to see how the world had changed in our absence. We'd spent 293 years, 4 months, and 12 days there, sitting, waiting, watching our brothers rust and decay, and fighting off the occasional iron spider that found its way into town. Almost 300 years of near stagnation is enough to drive even a skeleton mad, and we longed for something new. Our expedition was ill-fated as it seems. Almost as soon as we left the safety of the acid rain, we were set upon by a large group of humans, screaming for food. Weighed down by our gear, we knew that we were far too slow to outrun them, and ready ourselves for a fight. However, there were far too many of them, and for every one we struck down, it seemed like there were two more to replace them. I watched one of my companions fall, before taking a blow to the head and falling unconscious myself. And then I was here. After speaking with one of the nearby guards, I learned that I was in a place called Mongrel, beset on all sides by something they call the Fog. Alongside that, they also warned me against visiting the Floodlands to the north. Possibly worth exploring, but first, I need to get out of here and find my friends. However, with the loss of my gear, I'm stuck for now. Making a run back to Black Desert City would be suicidal in my current state, so I look for shelter. But even the least expensive building available was far more than I had left in my pockets. I needed a source of income. Noticing a towering mass of iron just outside the city gates, and with no other real options than hard labor, I set to mining out a chunk of the metal. It wasn't long, though, before I experienced the true horror of the fog the guard had mentioned. Sickly, blue bug men made a run at the gates, and while the guards themselves were tenacious, disabling and dismembering these fog men with ease, even when outnumbered, I was still amazed and horrified at the abandon with which their opponents threw themselves at them. These fog men were ravenous, and it only solidified the effect that I would need armor, weapons, and supplies in order to make it out of here. I mined through the day and night uninterrupted, contemplating my new situation. I knew that I needed to make it out of here, but wherever my friends are, I am no good to them dead. And if I want out, I'm sure that I can find others that do as well. Allies would be of great use right now, if for nothing more than to watch each other's backs. Day 2. At dawn, I took what little iron I managed to chunk off overnight, and started walking it back to town in order to find a shop. Five hundred eighty-eight cats. It wasn't much, but it was honest money at least. My luck improved significantly after exiting the shop, though, when I met my first friend in Mongrel. A strange little bug man who introduced himself as Beep. At least I thought he was introducing himself, but apparently he just says Beep sometimes, which also happens to be his name. Interesting. He appears weak, but says he aspires to become a master swordsman. I sensed a fire in him, despite his small stature. And even if he never becomes truly strong, the company would be nice to have. The rest of the day was uneventful. Beep and I went back to chipping away at the iron, working much faster this time. Having an extra set of hands on the job obviously helped, but the conversation seemed to help the time pass faster as well. Day 3. Early in the morning, the Fogmen launched another attack, this time catching Beep and I by surprise. They managed to land a hit on each of us before we ran away. 
leaving the guards to deal with them for now. Our wounds were relatively minor. My arm creaks a bit when I stress it, but Beep's chest wound should heal just fine given time. I knew that I need to get my hands on a repair kit soon. A more serious beating would put me out of action for quite a while without one. It wasn't a complete loss, though. A few of the fog men got close to the gate, and we managed to loot some of their weapons afterwards. Junk mostly, but once we sold it off, we had more money in our pockets than before. Upon realizing that we had left our entire hard day's work behind, Deep ran back to retrieve it and brought it to the store. It was much more than I could have mined out all on my own, and we got 1,300 cats for it. More than enough for us to buy ourselves a small shelter. It's definitely... cozy. It's ours, though, and we made sure to keep enough money to set aside for Beep to get some food, too. He said he wasn't hungry yet, but I told him I'd rather he have it when he needs it. I set about building a research bench in the meantime. It's going to be a long hike through the fog, and I want to be as prepared as possible this time. Beep was already home when I got back to the shack to start building. He watched for a time before joining in to help. He's got quite the knack for putting things together, and we finished the bench in short order. Upon completion of the research bench, I asked Beep to complete a few projects for us. Mostly busy work, however they'll be stepping stones to larger projects and I wanted to give him a chance to heal before he leaves town again. I went back to mining, but now heard screams coming from the fog. Hours it went on for. A myriad of voices, each one slowly fading until the only sound was the howling of the wind. Beep joined me once again later that night, after completing his research. I decided it best that I didn't talk about what I heard, and also that I needed to get Beep some armor and a real weapon. Day 4 In the morning, Beep hauled the ore to the shop once again. I'm hedging the shopkeepers become quite familiar with us by now. He came back with 1,200 cats for our coffers, and some interesting news. He overheard a conversation between some men about joining up with some kind of group. But other than telling me that they were hanging around a tower near the shop, he couldn't give me anything more specific. I decided it couldn't hurt to check it out. Securing some connections and resources in town would definitely help speed us on our journey out of here. It wasn't exactly what I had in mind, though. The group Beep had mentioned was the Shinobi Thieves, and while they don't seem like the most savory group of folk, they're only asking cash for entry into the guild. 10,000 cats is no small amount, though. Their leader spoke of training equipment, and discounts on gear as well. I can't lie, the offer was enticing. However, we didn't have the cats to cover the cost. Maybe we'll be able to scrape it together. These rags aren't doing much for Beep and I. Day 5 Day passed with very little excitement. I took the morning trip to the shop and finally had enough money to get a cheap repair kit. I took the moment there to fix my arm back up and got back to work with Beep. That creak in my shoulder is finally gone. It was beginning to drive me mad. We watched the comings and goings of the guards for a while and talked about our plans. We've decided that joining the Shinobi Thieves is in our best interest right now, as Mongol is not exactly a friendly place and the more people we have on our side, the better. Day 6 Today was a good day. 
we sold off some more iron in the early morning, and that a foolish fog man strayed a bit too far from the pack and decided that beef looked like a nice meal. Tired of running, and tired of having our work interrupted, we laid into him with our clubs. Before long, the guards came to assist us, but it felt good being able to get back at them myself. Later in the day, another came, and got much the same treatment as his brother before him. The guards did get there a little bit faster this time, though, and he was down in short order. The rest of the day was quiet, but not long before night fell, the fogmen came back, in greater numbers this time. Deciding that discretion was the better part of valor, Beep and I ran home. He and I had had more than enough fun for one day. We patched ourselves up the best we could, and I told Beep to go and rent a bed to rest up and heal in. The day was a busy one. He ended up taking a couple of hits in the fighting. The way things look, I can't afford to have him getting knocked unconscious around here. Day 7. We took it easy today. In the morning I went to the shop and traded in that shoddy repair kit for a genuine one, which should last quite a bit long. Beep came and joined me at the mine again. A little sore, he said, but his wounds are healed. He's tougher than he looks. We might just make a warrior out of him yet. We talked about the possibility of searching for another member of our little squad as well, but didn't come to a conclusion. On one hand, it's another mouth that we would have to feed. However, on the other, we could get more work done, and another sword on our side of the fight would be more than welcome. I said we should each think about it, and revisit the issue tomorrow. But that's all I've got for you today, folks. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Should Jumper and Beep search out for a new companion? Could they join up with the Shinobi Thieves? Let me know what you want to see in the comments below and we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.